What's up guys and welcome to this episode of Formula Supra. While I was away at the Freedom 500 racing a bunch of Crown Vicks in a Toyota Camry, big thanks to Cletus McFarlane, AM stopped by to check out the progress on the Supra. The last time they saw this thing, it was an actual bare chassis and we're just staring at the Judd V10 motor, talking about ideas and different ways that things could be done. But the real reason they came by was to show us the rapid prototype that they designed and 3D printed out of plastic so that we can test fit it on the Judd motor. And I think it came out phenomenal. So clearances, fitment, everything looks really good. We are gonna make a couple little changes. There's gonna be a one inch taller uh, deck height on it. And then we gotta make a bigger, maybe about a half inch to an inch thicker base on the bottom for a better mating surface on the bottom half of the intake. The front of it came out really good. We have a ton of room to pick up fresh air from the front bumper. We have plenty of clearance on the hood. So everything is looking proper. Just those two changes and they're gonna start making this thing out of carbon fiber. And we'll have that process to show you guys in the future. What's up guys? All right, we are doing something pretty crucial to the build right now, and that is dialing the input shaft into the pilot bearing in the flywheel. This is something that may get overlooked or on the OEM cars, it doesn't really matter because they already come kind of uh, perfectly sorted. Since ours is custom and we have a motor plate, we had to buy these dowels, which are offset so that when you move them, you can move the bell housing. I forget what these are though. It's like 0.0 something, so it's not a ton but it's enough to make sure that you're dialing in the input shaft to the perfect location. So once that is, well, first off, Dom had to make some tools. We had to pull the clutch back off. This is tool one that Dom had to make, and that's gonna bolt to the flywheel and be used so that he can dial in the dial indicator off of that to make sure everything is straight. I had to put the set screws for the dowels and the bell housing. So that's all tapped and ready to go. Uh, so once you set the dowels in their location, you just tighten up the set screw. Hopefully they never move and you never have to change it again. Uh, one and done, and that's it. So here's the pilot bearing in here. If you go around on this side, we had to pull all the spark plugs out. And Dom had to make a special tool. So this is uh, the front of the engine where we had to pull this little cover off here. Um, Dom made a tool that is going to slide into the gears or the two bolts here and a little nipple in the middle so that we can actually turn this engine over. Update. She on. What was that nope, not that much. Okay, what are we at? It's, um, it's, it's like just one off the zero. Right now we're only two thousandths off. Another small adjustment. Keep going a little bit more. Less than half. Less than half. Yep. All right, what is this? Just some very finite, crucial adjustments. All right, boys, we did it. We're within half a thou all the way around. That is within spec. I don't know who's spec within Dom spec. <laughs> Good to go. All right, guys, this is it. We finally got our big Brembo brake kit. This is the GTS Systems brake kit. It's a four piston, 365 millimeter disc for the rear and a six piston, 380 millimeter for the front. So this is a pretty big brake kit, uh, probably a lot more stopping power than we actually need on track, but nevertheless, Brembo, phenomenal. Really happy to have them on board the project and they're gonna be phenomenal to drive with on the track. So it is a bolt-on kit, but it's probably not gonna be bolt-on for us. So Dominic is gonna have to do some work with some of the brackets to make it work with the Wise Fab. So check it out. This massive piece of aluminum is gonna be our new Brembo brake brackets. Here we go, template to metal. Dom had to get the uh, aggressive blade to try to cut this block of aluminum.
raw break brackets in the making. I'm just throwing a little chamfer on these, round all the edges off just a little bit, which makes it look cleaner. Like it makes it look, gives that CNC look to it. Dude! Straight. Everything matches up in here. And shaved some weight off this baby. Probably like a good pound and a half, maybe more. Look at that beauty. Something else we can anodize now too. Dom turned this into this. Super lightweight aluminum bracket for the Brembo brakes. It's mounts to the Wise Fab knuckle. Came out sick. Obviously we would have liked the CNC because this would have been done in like a day instead of two days, but Dom killed it. All right, the verdict is in. Three, what was it, koozie? 3.1 pound? 3.1 on this steel bracket and the new Dom spec 6061 aluminum bracket about 1.1 1.3 so we saved a lot of weight <laughs> on the front end four pounds I'll take it we'll take it boom all right Brembo's are on the car I am beyond stoked on this kit it is probably overkill for what we need but it's going to be phenomenal for what we're doing uh, four piston 365 disc in the rear, six piston 380 front. Uh, Dom lightened the bracket by like four pounds per side, which is crazy. He already ran a 316 stainless steel hard line all throughout the car. So now all we have to do is hook the soft line up to the calipers, bleed this baby, and we are good to go. Dry break time, boys. So that is gonna plug into this, which is gonna feed the tank. We're just deciding on where to put this. Uh, Would have been dope to put it here but this is in front of the firewall so we cannot do that um, so we're kind of deciding where it's gonna go kind of feeling it in here or kind of like cut into the top of the bumper so it just sits like in here we haven't decided yet found our spot boys we have to modify we have to modify the dry brake a little bit so it can fit in this area but I think that's gonna be it I think that's going to be pretty dope. Better than it kind of like hanging down here. Uh, we can put it in the body, which I think is cool. So it has a nice support. You can just push the fuel tank right into it.
super stiff. Get her on there, dude. Booyah. We got fuel. So we're just missing some hardware. Wait for our 632s countersunks. And uh, we'll replace those Clicos. Should be good to go. Pretty clean. Pretty clean setup. My boy Cozy, he has been prepping and working his ass off, getting all this stuff prepped and ready to go to put the mat clear on. And we got the little booth here. You spray this yet? Yeah. This just, is already sprayed? That's just one coat. So that's one. Ooh, that looks. That's what I said. One coat, dude. Yeah. One think, coat. I think it's better than the two coats. See in the shade? That's it, dude. I don't, I don't, I think. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera super well, but. That's the dry carbon look I'm going for. It. Put it right in the light for me. I think it looks good like that. Yeah, I think it's gonna get too hazy. Well, is this dry yet or is it still tacky? This, this, this is still tacky. But well, look how good it looks. It looks so good, dude. Yeah, this is still. See, I'm I can... feeling this. Koozie, I think this is it, man. That looks so good. I think it looks really good. We originally, Koozie did a couple test panels with uh, two coats of clear and one coat of clear. The one looked a little too frosty. And the two had a little bit more sheen to it. Uh, but right now with this, this is one coat and it has like the, I think the perfect sheen that we're going for. Like a little, just a little bit, but still looks dry, still looks a little wet. So this is the paint booth right here, boys. Painting all the panels, just a couple at a time. Koozie's doing a phenomenal job. And uh, we didn't have access to a paint shop, so Koozie made it happen. Bought this little blow up booth, it's working mint. Perfect California day, nice and hot, so uh, should be drying perfectly. He's just gonna knock panels out uh, as much as possible today and tomorrow and hopefully have everything done by the end of the weekend. Yeah, baby, coming together. So what we decided to do on the carbon is actually have it all prepped and our buddy Koozie's doing that. Uh, we didn't want the gloss, we wanted more of the dry carbon look. So these panels are actually all prepped with uh, I think 600 grit sandpaper and it already looked a million times better, like exactly what we were looking for. So after that, uh, we wanted to spray a matte clear on everything and Koozie made a couple test pieces for us to check out uh, and everything was looking really good and he's already got like 80% of the car done so these are the pieces right next to me that he's been spraying and they'll, they'll look a lot better in the sunlight but it just brings like the saturation up on all the carbon so it's not a gloss finish it's not a full matte finish but it's more of a kind of satin finish and I think it looks absolutely phenomenal this is exactly what we were looking for in all the panels outside all right time to mask up So we're pretty lucky to be out here in California. This is one of the side skirts that Koozie nailed. And it's just baking in the sun right now. Coming out glistening, dude. It looks so much, it looks even better than I could have imagined, this mat. It might be tough to see on a, get it across on a camera, but dudes, crushing. This thing is gonna have a whole new look. Could only stay in a paint booth for so long before uh, all the <laughs> all the overspray was going to collect all over the camera lens and the uh, camera body so just want to show you guys what uh what koozie was up to real quick 
Uh, that side skirt's looking sick. Everything's coming out super sick, and Koozie's absolutely crushing it. So I'm pumped. Uh, he's about 90% done now. Uh, next big piece he's got to do is the hood. And uh, then we're pretty much complete. You can put the body back on, and we'll take some beauties of this baby when uh, it's all dialed in and fully looking glistening. All right, we got the panels on a car. When, when Koozie was painting these things, I couldn't believe how good they looked. And now that they're actually on the car, the thing looks brand new all over again. And we wanted to do this because we didn't want the clear look. So we, wanted to, we always wanted them to be a matte. So Koozie came up with this uh, awesome product, sprayed an awesome matte clear on here that has, still has a little bit of sheen on it. And I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. This is the exact look that I wanted and we are all stoked on it. So big thanks to Koozie for crushing it on the paintwork. That's it for this episode of Formula Supra. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.